as if you're Superman. You know, you can see through walls, you can see through night, wow. you can see through fog. You are Superman. The plan is not to put this on the heads of one person or, you know, one top tier unit. Anyone who's making contact with the enemy is going to have superhuman augmented vision that allows them to never miss anything. You have extraordinary superhuman hearing. So IVAS is a program that is the modern instantiation of a very old idea. This idea that you are going to augment the vision of soldiers and give them superhuman perception abilities. The idea is you can see at night, you can see thermal signatures, you can see hyperspectral signatures, you have extraordinary superhuman hearing, you're able to mark targets in the environment without projecting anything in the environment. You can seamlessly see in your heads-up display where all of your friends are, where all of your foes are, where all of the innocents and non-combatants are, and have that all just seamlessly presented to you as if you're Superman. You know, you can see through walls, you can see through night, wow. you can see through fog. You are Superman. This idea has been around for a very long time of putting a heads-up display, a computer, and a radio on every soldier. You can even go back to Robert Heinlein's 1959 novel, Starship Troopers, and that was really the concept behind the mobile infantry. They're wearing these kind of mech suits with fighter jet-style heads-up displays that show them where all their targets are, that show them where all of the good guys are, that help them do ballistics calculations showing where bullet impact is going to be in a much more intelligent way than just you know putting a red dot that's coaxial aligned, but actually saying, like, here is the impact point, factoring in the wind, factoring in your motion, factoring in what the other guy is doing. People have tried this over and over again, through history, and the text just never quite been ready, and they've also not maybe worked on it in quite the right way, but most importantly, nobody's ever built a software backend that could make it work. Even if the helmets were okay, they didn't have this kind of system, whether it's AI or something else, that could understand the whole battle space, taking in sensors from everybody. So my helmet, his helmet, his helmet, and that airplane, and that airplane, and that satellite, and that ship. It, you, you get what I'm saying. You're yeah. taking, building one common fused view of the world in real time has never really been properly accomplished. And so you have programs like Future Warrior, and Net Warrior, and Connected Soldier, and Land Warrior. You have all these different programs where the army has tried over and over. IVAS is sort of the latest, the latest, the latest attempt at this kind of individual infantry vision, vision augmentation system. When the IVAS contract was first awarded years ago, it was a really big deal, and I was really excited about it. Uh, I would, knew I couldn't compete with it because, unfortunately, it was being awarded right around the time that I was starting Andrel. So when, when the IVAS program was kind of running through the wickets, Andrel was 12 people. Obviously, I was not going to be able to win this contract. But as an ARVR guy, I was really excited that the Army was moving in that direction. And they were putting a lot of resources behind it. IVAS is a $22 billion contract. It's enormous. Wow. The plan is not to put this on the heads of one person or you know, one top-tier unit. It's to put it on the heads of every single person in the army who's bearing a rifle. Anyone who's making contact with the enemy is going to have superhuman augmented vision that allows them to never miss anything, never miss their shot, never hit the wrong thing. You, 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 you probably more than almost any, anybody can probably understand how, what an incredible tool that would be. Yeah. Um, the problem is that even IVAS has been plagued by many of the problems that have, have hit a lot of these other systems. You didn't have the back end that could provide all of that data to make it a useful thing rather than just a heads-up display. You didn't have uh, the hardware working as well as it could have. There were a lot of soldier reports that it was making people sick, that it was making people dizzy, that it was causing signature problems. There were quotes from soldiers in evaluations who said, this is going to get me killed. Uh, it was just... It was running into a lot of issues. Anyway, the punchline is uh, over the last year, I've been working on an angle to try and get the IVAS program into a better place, to try and make it everything that it should be. A few months ago, we teamed up with Microsoft, which was the company that had won the IVAS contract and that was using something based on their HoloLens system, which is now discontinued, to build the IVAS product. And we partnered with them to integrate Lattice, our AI system, with their heads-up display. 
So uh, we, we, we integrated that. We did it very quickly. It was actually a less than three-week process. In three weeks, we went from teaming up to having Lattice feeding all of our three-dimensional tracking information into their existing IVAS heads of display. We did a soldier touch point with it. They used it in some exercises and some in some trials. They said, oh my God, this is incredible. I can see drones that are coming to attack me. I can see what their attack vectors are. I can see where the people controlling them are. I can see where I need to go to be safe in an amount of time that is reasonable before that drone actually gets to me. You know, really, really powerful stuff. Wow. But here's the really big deal. As of just about now, Anduril is taking over the IVAS program as the prime. Microsoft is transferring all of the employees, hardware, IP, facilities, everything to Anduril. We are now going to be the prime on the IVAS program. We are going to continue to integrate Lattice into it, and we are building a totally new system on the hardware side that is going to be better than anything that anyone has ever seen. Holy it is going to be by shit. far the best AR VR, MR, vision augmentation system that has ever been built in terms of resolution, in terms of field of view, in terms of graphical fidelity, in terms of sensor quality and what you can do with those sensors. It is a bigger jump from what exists today than the jump that I made when I started Oculus. It is a jump that I think cannot be overstated. And I am very aligned with the Army's vision in terms of this being something that should be on everybody, but I think my vision goes maybe even a little further. I don't just want this on every person who's carrying a rifle. I want it on every logistician, every loadmaster, every rotary wing pilot, every fixed wing pilot. I want it deployed with everybody across every service, every branch, so that every person is eyes for everyone else. If you what can, about police? I think that police is going to be a very interesting it's going to be an interesting but adjacent challenge. So, for example, police, you're trying to make something that they can wear all day, every day, and they're also interacting face-to-face -face with people. Like, Let me put it this way. You can't put a RoboCop helmet on uh, on most police officers. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 too, it's too heavy. It's too much protection. It's you know, for, for what they're doing day to day. But the software backend is certainly going to integrate. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll give an example. I think that probably what you're going to see on law enforcement officers is going to look more like a pair of Oakleys that is still running Lattice. It's still showing them where threats are, but it probably doesn't need the ability to pick up an attack helicopter 15 mm -hmm. clicks mm -hmm. out and then flag them where they need to go. Like I probably don't need that type of expensive sensing on there. I probably need things that are much more you know, of a local web, but uh, that's definitely going to happen. And it's something I'm very excited about. Also, like you look at things like body cameras. Like You could make body cameras that are way better, that do a 360 degree capture, and right now, a body camera for a law enforcement officer is really just a tool that gets his ass in hot water, right? Like that's that's basically its job. Nobody, not enough people, look at footage from these body cams and say, "Oh wow, this guy was totally in the right in what he did," right? If the footage exonerates their actions, then everyone ignores it, and the media says nothing. And if it shows that he made any mistake, then they're going to they're gonna you know they're gonna hoist him by his own petard. What I want to see is body cameras that are a tool that law enforcement officers are excited to use. I want something that's watching my six. I want something that's watching for threats that I'm not seeing. I want basically a guardian angel on my shoulder that is able to do what backup would normally do for me and at a superhuman level. Like, Imagine if you could have not just eyes in the back of your head, but what if you could have a hundred eyes all throughout your head, all looking out into the world, and at the slightest disturbance, be like, Holy shit, I think someone's opening that window and firing like they're they're aiming a gun from that window. It should be telling me not like, hey, you know, be aware that someone might be shooting you. It should be giving you even more direct commands than that. Like it should like th throw a red threat alert and show you a direction you need to throw yourself immediately to not get shot, to get behind cover. Like you're going to see very tight integration between man and machine on these things. Anyway, I Ivas is very much a warfighter oriented system and it's oriented towards the things that people at the tip of the spear are doing I think you're going to see similar ideas but oriented around maybe a different form factor for law enforcement. What does it look like? What does it look like? It looks like a so the, one of my beliefs with the, with the previous IVAS system uh, it was not very tightly integrated into the helmet. So you wear your ballistic helmet and it basically straps on top of it. You like clip it on the brim here, you run a strap to the back, there's a big battery pack and compute module back here, there's a big sensor brim you clip onto the helmet. Um, 
the problem when you're trying to clip onto an existing system is it ends up not very tightly integrated, lots of snag points, lots of lots of snag hazard. It ends up being very heavy and 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 mm-hmm. misbalanced where it's really, really torquing your neck. The thing that I'm building is an all-up integrated ballistic shell that integrates hearing protection, hearing augmentation, vision protection, vision augmentation, all into one seamless ballistic shell that protects you from air bursts, direct fire rounds, all you know, blast and concussion, the, the whole thing in one integrated seamless product. And uh, I'm, I'm not quite ready to show the actual thing, but true to Anderol product company fashion, we've been investing a ton of resources in this for years at this point. So I knew that I wanted this to happen years ago. I wasn't sure if I would be able to make it happen, but we started putting millions of dollars into this years ago so that if it happened, we would be ready to go and not you know, trying to catch up from the start. Damn. Anyway, this shit is going to be crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, so the first, the first fully integrated system, meaning it has all of the different sensors, all of the different compute and vision augmentation systems all integrated into one thing is going to be done at the end of March. So right now we're basically in systems test where we have individual systems that we are, you know, doing doing development and testing of, but the first fully integrated helmet with all of this stuff actually working, it, like actually working tied together, tied together with Lattice, feeding tracks, like that's all going to be done in, in, in March. And like, just to give you an example of how useful this might be, like if you want to mark a target for somebody else, you'd have to use a laser, right? What if you could mark it digitally and you don't emit any signature for anyone else with nods to see? And what if everyone else can see it? Here's an even crazier like, and this is when I say crazy, I don't mean like a hypothetical. Like, you could just do this with this tech. Imagine that you're doing some kind of pincer and you have some guys over here, some guys over here. And I can't see a guy behind that building, but you can. If you're seeing him, it's taking that track, it's taking that enemy mark, and it's now putting it into my vision. I can now see through the building through the wall, and I can see the guy coming around the corner Holy before he's there. Shit. Could so you, they're all talking to each other. It's all continuously, and it's not just the helmets, you're also, anything that's seamed into Lattice is talking to you. So if there's a drone overhead that sees a guy five clicks out that way, coming up a hill, and he's he thinks he's going to set up on top of that hill and pop you, imagine if it sees him, it notifies you, you look at him coming over that hill, and you bring your rifle on target, literally the moment he clears, you're taking out that threat. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.